All right, so with Stadia now shutting down for good, Google has done a pretty good job of issuing refunds to users, and they even announced that we'd be able to use our leftover Stadia controllers as regular Bluetooth controllers. With that said, in this video, we're gonna take a quick look at how to do this, and yeah, let's get started. All right, so when Google first launched its Stadia service, it also offered users the option of using a first-party Stadia controller. And although the controller worked wirelessly, it was a bit different than your standard Bluetooth controller in that it also used Wi-Fi for connectivity. So you were able to pair with a smartphone using the Stadia app or via Chromecast. But the thing is that you had to use a certain software and hardware configuration using the Stadia program to be able to use the controller wirelessly. Now with this method, though we're going to be able to use it as a regular bluetooth controller it's a very easy process and in case you want to check out our other videos about the state controller we have some links below and yeah let's get started all right, so for this process, you're going to need a Stadia controller, a laptop with Google Chrome version 108 or higher, and a USB-C cable. All right, so first, what you're going to want to do is press and hold the Stadia button on your controller until the status light turns on. Once your controller turns on, you're going to need to connect it by USB to your computer. And once it's connected, you're going to want to open Google Chrome and head to stadia.google.com forward slash controller. And there's going to be a bunch of on-screen instructions, which are pretty straightforward, but they will need you to download some additional software which will then be installed on in your controller. Now do note that once you do this your controller will be strictly compatible with Bluetooth devices but given that Google is shutting down Stadia anyway it only makes perfect sense to upgrade your controllers for this kind of functionality. Now the on-screen instructions will also require you to do some specific button combinations and a few more additional downloads using the Chrome browser. And once all of that is done, you can simply unplug your state controller from your computer. Once again, hold the button to turn it on and it will go into pairing mode, at which point you can go to your device's Bluetooth settings and search for the device with Stadia in its name. Now, once your controller is connected, the indicator light on the controller should turn a solid white color. And yeah, it should work nicely with most Bluetooth compatible devices. I was able to make it work with my MacBook and I was even able to play Resident Evil Village using the Stadia controller. I did try using it on my Nintendo Switch, but unfortunately it did not work. And I'm guessing the Switch uses a different kind of system for connectivity with controllers. But yeah, overall, it's a pretty simple process. And in case you want to do this with your own Stadia controller, and repurpose it as a regular Bluetooth game controller, then it is pretty convenient and fast. Now, it's important to know that users only have until the end of 2023 to do this, more specifically December 31st, 2023. So if you want to do this, you should do this within the year. Afterwards, you won't be able to use it and there's pretty much no use for your Sega controller. Unless, of course, you want to use it using a wired connection, in which case it should still work. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Did you guys ever use Stadia? Are you gonna do this to your own Stadia controller? Do check out our other content here on TeamVRY. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.